Hey everyone, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, where last time we took on a whole bunch of side quests around uh, Lower Linosia, namely helping out around Red Rooster Stead. Today, I forgot to end the last episode by doing the mi uh, minion roulette, so let's do that now. See who we're getting for this week. Kitty! Anyways, today, we are heading out to pick up our first gatherer class. We picked up three crafters, uh, the armor, the blacksmith, and the culinarian. Today, we're picking up our first gatherer, where we can gather our own raw materials to do whatever crafting we would like. And the crafter, or sorry, the gatherer available here in Limsa Lominsa is... The Fisher. We're going to learn to fish. Now, fishing is one of the most unique classes in the game. It's not like the other crafters, in fact. And of course, since it's a crafter, it's also not like any gatherers or combat class. I'm doing that thing wrong, where I'm saying I'm saying crafter when I mean gatherer and gatherer when I mean crafter. OK, it is a it is a gatherer class. So, of course, it is not like any of the crafters or any of the uh, combat classes. On top of that, it's also very distinct from the other gatherer classes. Fisher is going to be a little bit on the interesting side, and I think I have a good strategy for taking care of this, but we'll see. Well, a well-wishing welcome to you, adventurer friend. You've worked your way to Fisherman's Bottom. When you want to fish for a day, you can call, uh, you can call a culinarian, but we fishermen feast for life. I've set the bait. Think you're ready to bite? I think I am. Hooray, hooray! Looks like we've got a live one. Let me walk you through the life of a fisherman in Limsa Lominsa. Since we're surrounded by the sea, the fishing sites are a fisherman's delight. If you can't fish it here, you can't fish it anywhere. While some of us rope our fish in with rods and reels, others skim the seabed with nets for creepy crawly critters. You might say we cast a wide net. People prattle about our pullers just about everywhere in Limsa. And there's much and more I haven't mentioned. We shepherd the ships, preside over the ports, manage the mongers, all while making sure not to leave any adventurers out to sea. I'll wager you prefer to work alone, so we'll start you off the rod and reel. Now, you may not necessarily net the numbers uh, net fishing yields, but pole fishing positively pulls prettier prizes. And that's a long and short of it. When you're ready for another bite of bait, I'll reel, I'll reel you in before the guildmaster. And Mulika, you are very excited about your job. I'd hate to hear you'd had a change of heart. You have, haven't? You haven't, have you? And Mulika would like to have you reaffirm your, uh, reaffirm your desire to join the Fisher's Guild. Spoken truly like a true bespoke fisherwoman. Well then, it's time you met the Guildmaster. But unfortunately, unfortunately, and somewhat ironically, our nefarious netmasters out fishing at the moment. At the, this moment, and every moment, that is. So Sisipu tends to tend to tasks that require tending to, such as deciding whether you'll sink or swim with our guild. Sisipu is presiding over those pools whether you decidedly, uh, whenever you decidedly decide to say hello. She might seem somewhat standoffish, but she's only keeping an eye out for sharks. Be yourself and you have nothing to worry about. You really love your job. My god. Hello there, Sisipu. Yes, yes, save your breath. I heard every word between you and, and Mulika, so I know she told you my role here. As she said, Walwo Lago is supposed to be Guildmaster, but apparently has bigger fish to fry, so all his work falls to me. That includes making sure our, uh, making sure our new fish aren't shellfish idiots or potential anemones. You passed the first test by not laughing at that awful joke. Now you only need the right answer to this question. Are you prepared to fish like you've never fished before? Well, in fact, I have never fished before, so I am, in fact, prepared to fish as if I had never fished before. Well, you're smarter than the majority of bottom dwellers that find their way here. Welcome to the guild. Now, this wouldn't be much of a guild if we sent you out to sea with only a pole and a prayer, so I suppose I can spare you a few pearls of wisdom. Nevertheless, you're still going to need that pole and prayer, so I, I can at least provide you with the former. Here you go. One out of two isn't bad. I'll even throw in these lugworms since you're not like to get far without bait. The rods we bestow upon our new fish are priceless objects, which is to say they don't cost anything. Once you know what you're doing, you'll probably want a proper one. 
But in the meantime, let's see if you can figure out how to hold your pole. Ready the one I gave you and your lessons can begin. All right, we get a weathered fishing rod and a lot of lugworms. We're gonna need them. To fish, you must first change your class to fisher by equipping a rod in your main hand. If the body of water you are near is fishable, the icon for the cast action will glow. Determine a bait to apply to your line by selecting the bait action and then check marking the desired item from the list that appears. Some bait can only be used in certain locations or for landing certain types of fish. Bait and tackle can be harvested, made by disciples of the hand, or purchased from various merchants or fieldcraft vendors. Always make sure your inventory is stocked before heading out into the wild. Alright then, let's go ahead and toss our fishing rod on. Create a new gear set for the fisher. And let's get going. Sisipu would like to assign you your first task. You're looking quite formidable. Let's hope you don't scare all the fish away. Now, the first rule of fishing is to hold on to your rod. Take care of your rod and your rod will take care of you. Let me go know if I'm going too fast for you. Since you're new here, we're going to start off small, and they don't come much smaller than anchovies. You'll find schools of anchovies swimming around outside in Galadian Bay, so you can catch your meager supper without even walking ten yalms. Anchovies are hardly the most cunning fish in the sea, making them an ideal first assignment. Simply bait a hook with some of those lugworms I gave you, dip it in the water, and the fish will practically catch themselves. Alright then, we are going to go fishing, and I actually really like fishing in this game, but like the crafters, gathering's a bit on the tedious side. Less tedious than crafters, though. Your fishing log contains invaluable information on everything from fishing hole locations to detailed fish data to personal records. The log can be found under logs in your main menu. One of the nice things about uh, fishing, oops, I meant to actually clear my hotbar, not use it. Uh, but one of the nice things about, shoot, let's go put you there, you there. I'll figure out which is which later. Oh god, I was going to say something and then I went and tripped up and I have confused myself. Right, one of the nice things about the about the gatherers is you don't need to get, like, materials in order to put together a recipe. No, we're literally gathering the materials ourselves, so it's a lot simpler on the preparation and thank goodness. After using the cast action to cast your line into the water, you need to simply sit back and wait for a bite. When a fish bites, you will not only see the line being tugged, but hear it. While a fish is on the line, use the hook action to attempt to reel in your catch. Your chances of successfully reeling in a fish after hooking are directly affected by the fish type and your gathering rating. Good to know! To start off, we do need bait. We're going to start off with lugworms. Though we have also, as a culinarian, crafted goby balls and crayfish balls, which we can use when we get to higher levels. Let's go ahead and cast these lugworms out into the water. Turn on our cast light, which I'm going to move over here. And now we just wait. Eventually, we'll get a hook right there. And exclamation marks will appear over our head. The exclamation marks roughly correspond with how big the fish we're going to catch actually is. Uh, with each type of fish having a certain symbol. Um, small, all the small fish will have a one exclamation mark, medium fish will have two, large fish have three. Um, but generally you can use the exclamation mark to tell more the category of fish you'll be getting. It's worth pointing out that things like a, for example, a Lemins and Anchovy will always be one exclamation mark. A Merlethor Gobi will always be one exclamation mark. The same type of fish will always have the same number of exclamation marks when you have it on the hook. Anyways, once it's on the hook, you just hit, uh, hit the hook action and reel it in. Alright, we need to catch five anchovies in total. I do appreciate that they notify you in multiple ways uh, when you've got something on the hook. 
They notify you with the exclamation marks, they notify you with the sound effect, and if you're on controller, they actually notify you with a little bit of a rumble, I've noticed. At least on PlayStation 5, they do. Really, really good, and also a very good way to implement accessibility. Make sure you've got multiple ways through multiple senses of notifying players. That's not to say that Final Fantasy XIV has the best accessibility uh, options in the world. There have been lots of complaints and even mods to try and address a lot of its issues. But I don't use mods, I'm on PlayStation 5, so I don't have access to those. Also, technically mods are against terms of service, but the unofficial rule is don't make the developers know that you're using mods and it's fine. The only time it becomes a problem is if, for example, you're the World First winners for the most recent uh, World First competition for a brand new Ultimate Raid, uh, and you're all using mods that don't just make the game a little bit more accessible to play, but actually give you an unfair advantage, then they kind of have to ban you because you've got so much notoriety. There's been some controversy about that recently. Also, dating the video, because I record these like five weeks in advance and edit them four weeks in advance. So that is hopefully old news. Hopefully that drama has died down by the time this comes out. I just need to get one more anchovy. There we are. Thank you very much. Let's go make our delivery and then we can check out the new action we picked up. Hello, Sisipu. Anchovies swim off every shore of Limsa Lominsa so you can bring them back from anywhere you like, so long as it's not the fishmongers. Alright, well, I got plenty of anchovies for you. Here, chovy chovy, here, chovy chovy. Fair flock of feisty fish you've got, giddy guppy. Careful they don't slip out of sight. Wawolago? To what do we owe the. Pleasure. A guildmaster's got to get after the guppies, dividing up the daily drudgery, picking out a, por a proper potable and some such support and service. And who gets after the guildmaster? We have books to balance, you know. Books you should be balancing. I did my best to balance the books, but the bill just keep uh, killed, bent the bow back, bouncing the whole batch off the boat. That's not why you know it was just an expression. Ah, but that's neither here nor there. So long as you keep at the bits, the Torah hard books will balance themselves. Don't let that go to your head, of course. Any beginner can snag some anchovies, but you'll need to experiment with different lures and explore new waters if you want to catch the big ones. Fundamentals are fine, but the fun is fishing for new finds. Like my uncle always said, fishing's like philandering. You never know what you'll catch. And with those well-spoken words of wisdom, we will leave you to your wiles. All right, well, thankfully, we're already at level five because, my God, do those fish give experience. But, of course, we do have our logs to deal with before we move on to the next Fisher quest. So we'll be finishing off our episode, of course, by doing that. First, though, we picked up the ability to chum, reduce the amount of time for the next fish to bite. Cancels current mooching opportunity. Uh, we'll get into mooching eventually. I don't... I think I'll be using Chum too much. It uses up your gatherer points, which I don't really like doing too much. There's more useful things to spend them on than waiting less. All right, let's see. In order to fill out our fishing log, what are we going to need to do? So uh, each area in the game has several fishing spots and each fishing spot has a number of fish you can catch. How we're going to be doing it is at the end of each, uh, after we've completed our gatherer, episode, uh, gatherer quest for the day, we're going to go through and try and fill out as much of the fishing log as we can in each area that unlocks. 
you need to be a certain level in order to fish at various locations. Uh, so once we're at the appropriate level, we will do our fishing. All right, so we have actually gathered all of the fish that can be gathered in the lower uh, limbs of the the lower decks area with lugworms. Technically, other fish will also bite lugworms, but they're not the ideal bait. Uh, we've got Merlethor gobies, Lim Lemons and anchovies, Malm kelp, and finger shrimp. But to catch the others, we're going to need some new baits. Specifically, I believe we are looking for pill bugs. I'll go ahead and buy 99 of them. Never hurts to have a, just a ton of bait. And now we can go fishing. I do have a fishing log guide pulled up, so I am able to refer to that to see what left, uh, what we have left to catch. Uh, but there should be three more fish we can catch in this area. Mom kelp. Dang it. Come on, what I want is any of the three new ones. Unfortunately, yes, this means that the fishing episodes are going to be a lot of waiting around at the end as we wait for the fish to bite. But that's just how fishing goes. I will see if I can go ahead and actually edit this fishing down a little bit, make it a little bit less tedious when we're filling out the fishing log. Normally I try to avoid giving myself any editing work with Final Fantasy videos just because I'm doing daily episodes and I want to make sure that's as little stress on me as possible so it's not an issue for my other Let's Plays. But I'll see if I can at least make the Fisher episodes a little bit easier. Alright, got one of the new fish, a Coral Butterfly. I got another new fish. We got the Harbor Herring. Well, I got a level up and learned about fish size and sneaking. The higher your perception rating, the better chance you have of landing a large sized fish. Depending on the variety, it may be useful for mooching, which we'll be learning about later. And Sneak. The Disciple of the Land Action Sneak allows you to conceal yourself from enemies so that you may log, mine, or fish without fear of being attacked. Be mindful, however, that this ability is not effective against enemies with a level significantly higher than your own. In other words, we are free to run around where we want without needing to worry about getting attacked. And there's the last new fish in this area, the Ocean Cloud. There's only two more fish to catch in the lower decks, but we can't quite get them yet. They require new abilities and are a little bit too high level. Alright, so next up we're going to head up here, and in the upper decks we're going to do a little bit of fishing. Just a little bit. Doesn't matter what bait, I just want to catch anything. I feel like this is in fact, oh no, it is a fishing spot. It wouldn't have let me fish if it wasn't. All right then. Limbs of Lominsa upper decks actually shares basically all of the fish with the lower decks. There is one fish that differs. Uh, nothing new we can catch here. I just wanted to get it on my fishing log. Next, we're gonna be heading to Middle Lenosia.
And our first fishing spot here is going to be the Rogue River. Let me go ahead and pull up my fishing log for this area. And let's see. Crayfish ball should work here. Though the idea would actually be moth pupas, which I haven't picked up. I should do that. I should stop back by the uh, item shop and pick up some moth pupas. Alright, the first new fish here is the Princess Trout. There are three more fish we can catch here for now, I want to say. Another new fish, we've got the Chub. And the last new fish for this area is the crayfish. Alright, that's all we can really get at the Rogue River for- wait, hang on. Uh... There actually is one more, hmm. Why did I have that one marked as not being able to get yet? Well, I'm gonna keep trying and we'll see if we actually pick it up. I ran out of the bait I was using, so let's pick up the proper bait, moth pupas. Actually, let's make sure we have 99 of every bait that uh, is currently usable. So that would be goby balls, we need... Let's go the other way, 89 more. Ah, uh, then let's see, what's next on the list? Moth pupas, crayfish balls, blood worms, and I think that's it. That's all the bait we can grab for now. Alright, back to fishing. There's the last new fish at this spot, the dwarf catfish. I caught it using moth pupas. Alright, next up, our next destination is going to be the West Ageless River, which is, in fact, uh, the river... Wait. This one, I believe. Yeah, the second major river you cross over on your way up to the, uh, the descent. So let's get over there. And a lot of these fishing holes are actually going to have quite a bit of overlap in what fish are available. Which will be nice for us because it will make it a lot simpler to uh, fill out the fishing log. Uh, later fishing holes will be have a lot fewer fish to actually catch. Alright, West Ageless River, let's do this. Alright, got it on our fishing log. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, a lot of shared fish with the Rogue River. But there is one fish we could catch now. Looks like crayfish balls are what's being reported to me as the best bait to use for them. So let's try that out. There we go, immediately got it with the crayfish ball, the gudgeon. Which I want to say is a sturgeon. Anyways, that is everything we can catch for now, West Ageless River. Next on my list is the Zephyr Drift. Let me pull up the fishing log for that, check the exact location for that. Okay, that's what I thought. It's the ocean between the Rogue and Ageless Rivers. 
And what bait is ideal for here? Looks like lugworms are what we want to go with. Right, there is actually a lot of overlap with what we had in Limsa Lominsa. We already have a lot of these, but let's see. The fifth fish we can catch. That one is... Uh, that one requires pill bugs. And it looks like that's the only other fish we can catch. Everything else though, looks to be too high level. Alright, pill bugs. Let's do this. There we are, there's the new fish for this area, the sea cucumber. Alright, next up we are heading to Lower Lanosia because Lower Lanosia has one fishing hole for us. And it is easiest to get there by using return. We are looking for the Morning Widow, which is actually the name, I believe, of this river. I want to say it's the name of this river. I really hope I'm right. Should probably have Sneak on, actually. Forgot to turn that on. All right, it looks like the bait we want to use here is moth pupas. Looks like, as usual, there's a lot of overlap here with other uh, fishing holes. Let's see, the fifth and the seventh we can possibly catch. For the fifth, we want crayfish balls for the Seventh, we want bloodworms. Alright, crayfish balls first. Alright, there's one of the new fish. We've got the Dusk Gobi. Now switching over to bloodworms. There's the last new fish for this area, the Maiden Carp. Wow, we hit level 13. I can't believe we actually hit level 13 already. That is wild. We got so much experience from fishing. Well then, with that, I'm going to off screen sell out a lot of the fish we caught because we caught a lot of fish. Some of these are useful for crafting recipes. Some of them aren't. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and off screen clear out my inventory of any fish we don't need. And next time on Final Fantasy 14, once I have gone through and seen how difficult editing a fishing episode will be, uh, so I know if it'll be feasible for the future, uh, we'll be back to do more fishing and learn more as we take on the level 5 quest. I will see everyone next time for that.